now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Stop It, Suave, Shampoo Plus Egg, and other fine cosmetics. Now, let's all play What's My Line? <laughs> meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, a young man who occasionally sits in for Arthur Godfrey, but who, in his own words, says that his chief claim to fame is that he is married to the beautiful Mary Healy, occasionally known as... Peter Lynn Hayes. Thank you, Mrs. Martin Gable. <laughs> oh, thank you. At this point, it becomes my great pleasure to present a young lady that uh, was so anxious to return to her eager readers via the Hearst newspapers that she arrived two hours ahead of the plane to tell you about the happenings in Monaco, and I don't mean <laughs> Santa Monaco, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. The prince of this panel, as far as Arlene and I are concerned, <laughs> Mr. Bennett Sir. <clears throat> Gosh, we're glad to have you girls back. Thank you. And the fellow who's running our show, the famous news moderator, panel moderator, John Charles Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. And panel, I have some grand news for you tonight. Because the girls are back from Monaco, you don't have to put on your blindfolds oh, for the first time. But once again tonight, we are up to our old tricks. We'll have some very fine people and some interesting occupations in front of our panel in just a bit. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the experts a little later in the show. We'll meet our first challenger in just a minute. I remember when the baby came to our house. Papa said, she looks so bare. Whatever happened to her hair? Mama said, it will be there. And Mama knew, as you can see, the hair grew, lovely as can be. Then came the time Mom said to Sis, to keep my hair lovely, I use this. For only Helene Curtis Suave can make hair gleam without that ugly, oily sheen. Dull, dry hair is never nice. No man ever glances twice unless hair has that healthy glow. That's why you need Suave, you know. So she used Suave. Her hair behaved and was so soft. And bows flocked round her just to see Suave highlights twinkling prettily. So she'll use Suave for all her life to keep herself a pretty wife. Did you use Suave today? Helene Curtis Suave? Choose liquid or cream. Only Suave contains greaseless lanolin. And now we'll meet our first contestant. Will you come in, please, sir? There he is. And now for reasons that will be transparent subsequently, panel, I'm not going to ask our first challenger to sign his name, nor are we going to tell you what his name is, but we will ask him where he's from. Where are you from, sir? I'm from Woodstock, Illinois. General. Woodstock, Illinois. Fine. You see, the marriage of the name and the place of residence, some others might give you too much. Well, come along with me, if you will. Fine. And if you'll sit right down here, sir, uh, you know how we score, do you? I think I'm acquainted with it. All right, fine. I've watched it long enough, John. Well, good. That's a good way to know. We're very happy to have somebody say they know how to score because they watch the program. Well, let's let everybody at home and those who are with us here in the theater know exactly what your line is, shall we? One bit of information. Our guest is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Gilgallan. Oh, Mr. X, uh, do you work for a profit-making organization? I do. Is yours what might be termed a white-collar job? Do you I work didn't... with your brain rather than your hands? Well, I like to think I do, yes. 
Uh, do you work indoors more than outdoors? Yes. Uh, do you work in what could be called an office? Yes. Uh, are there other people around you, aside from perhaps a secretary? Do you work with other Not people? Not necessarily. No, I would say here, Dorothy, the proper answer would be no or it would be misleading because our mm -hmm. challenger does not have people necessarily working around him while he performs his task. Right, sir? That's right. Good deal. Mr. Sir. Did you say this gentleman's name was Mr. X, Dorothy? Well, that's what I'm calling him. Mr. X, you're a happy-looking gentleman, <laughs> and you have something athletic about you. Does your work have anything to do with anything connected with the sports world? No, I get this way just out of sheer willpower. <laughs> <laughs> you very good. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. <laughs> do people come to see you in your job? No. I'm sorry, they should have that lovely opportunity. <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Mr. Peter Lind Hayes. Well, then I assume, Mr. X, from Woodstock, I'm from Cairo, Illinois. I wanted to mention Cairo, too. Have you ever been to Cairo, Let's Illinois? not be syrupy, please, <laughs> Mr. Hayes. I'm trying to win him over to seeing things my way. Uh, <laughs> since Arlene established the fact that people do not come to you, but do you by any chance go to see people occasionally or go to see uh, events? In other words, do you have anything to do with writing? Would it be, uh, do you write? Right? Yes. Uh, partially. Partially? Yes, I, sometimes I would think we all, you know, at one time, don't we? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you mean you've never finished a story, in other words? <laughs> I beg your pardon, Peter. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I was trying to get around to the, uh, we are surrounded here by people that write. Uh, both of these ladies have contributed greatly to the happenings in Monaco. And are you a member of the Fourth Estate by any chance? I think yes. You mean you don't know? Well, <laughs> don't a... say any more. Just leave it lie. That's right a good there. answer for right that. Right there. Well, All right, you've got a good answer for that. Give it. There's a difference of opinion on that. Oh, <laughs> fine. Wait till George Goble sees you <laughs> with that crew haircut and everything. Well, actually, I'm getting around to the newspaper business. Are you remotely or by any chance connected with the newspaper business? Yes, sir. And you are a writer? Partially. <laughs> You just do half the crossword puzzles, is that it? <laughs> well, since Bennett established <laughs> also that you uh, look very jolly and you have quite a suntan there, and actually you look physically in great shape, are you a sports writer? No, uh, this, uh, this I got mowing grass the day the sun shone in Woodstock. <laughs> and that does not make him a sports writer. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, Mr. X, are you connected with a newspaper? I didn't understand. Are you, you connected specifically with, with one newspaper, employed by one newspaper? I don't want to confuse you, Dorothy, with an answer here. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> I withdraw the question because I don't want to confuse you either, John. Fine. Uh, Most confusing uh, program I've ever been on. <laughs> Mr. X, could you be described as either an editor or a publisher? Neither one. Five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Rax, by any chance, would you have a column that is syndicated? Yes. Hold the phone. <laughs> we have studied this matter very carefully, Bennett. I made a boo-boo. <laughs> that, that, that's it. That makes it six down and four to go. Our guest does not have a column that's syndicated. Miss Francis. Do you have a strip that is syndicated? If you'll pardon me for putting it that way. Yes, I would say that's so. <laughs> yes, By that, I mean a cartoon strip of some kind that might yes. be syndicated. Yes. Oh, uh, that's the portion. Oh, uh, oh heavens above. Um, is it one that we see here in New York? Yes. Um... I hope. I know you're not Al Cap. Uh, <laughs> is it uh, is it one that appeals more to the young people than to the adults? Well, this is difficult to answer, Miss Arlene. It certainly has a very wide appeal among youngsters, but I'm also one of the fans of it, and uh, you're just I'm a boy young in heart. heart and mind, I guess. <laughs> but I don't know how young. Is it a, uh, 
a strip like several boxes of cartoons rather than one uh, large cartoon that is in every day. Yes, it's a, it's a four-panel strip. A four-panel strip? My God. That sounds like heaven, just to say, just yes, like... what's my line strip? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to pass to Peter Lynn Hayes. Well, I have a slight hunch because uh, a very dear friend of mine, a great golfer named Willard, uh, created, he's from Illinois, too, he created Moon Mullins. Could you be carrying on the uh, work of Moon Mullins? No, I know Willard very well, but I'm not that man. That's seven down and three to go. Actually, I'm going to flip all the I'm cards. Walt Kelly. No, it isn't Walt Kelly. You did get the occupation, the line, though. We just thought you might be able to get the strip, too, by looking at um, Chester Gould. You'd know it was oh, Dick Tracy, yeah. now wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, our business is very rewarding. For instance, I know what's going to happen for the next two days in Dick oh. Tracy, and I'm sworn to secrecy, and you couldn't get it out of me, even with torture. Not even the old Chinese water treatment. John, that was music my ears to hear you say Chester, that. Chester, it was wonderful having you with us, and uh, I think we gave the panel a rough time. A I rough time, did. anyway. If it hadn't been the fact that all the newspaper publishers are in town, we'd still be here, I think. <laughs> good to have had you with us, sir. Would you Thank say you. goodnight to the panel? I'm sure they'd like Thank to meet you. you. You've gotten off to a running start. Now let's see if we can't trip you up along the way. Let's see our next challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please, ma'am? Nola? Nola Runley, is that right? <laughs> Miss or Miss? Miss. Miss. Well, don't I mean after all. <laughs> Golly, and where are you from, Miss Riley? Baltimore, Maryland. Baltimore, Maryland. Yes. Well, I tell you, I think in this instance it might give the panel a bit of a boost if they had a closer look at you. So would you take a hike down in front of the panel for me? Hello, Miss Riley. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Riley? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> down, boy. <laughs> all right, Miss Riley, if you will, over here. Turn, turn around. Snap. There'll be a short intermission now. <laughs> a short intermission while we adjust the button. Will you come over here and join me, please, Miss Runley? She's going to tell you. And I wonder if you're familiar with our scoring system, are you? Yes, I am. Good. Thank then let's you. let the people at home and our friends here know exactly what your line is. Runley is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Bennett Cert. Miss Runley, let's start on the old gambit. Is there a product connected with what you do? No, sir. That's no what? product. <laughs> one gambit. Down, <laughs> one down and nine to go. That makes uh, Miss Francis next. Well, Miss Runley has an outdoors look about her. Do you do your work out of doors at all? Yes, I do. Um... Is it in any way associated with the sports world, what you do? Yes. Are there uh, uh, different implements that you might hold in your hand during this game or sport? Yes. Is it played uh, on the green? Sometimes. <laughs> I know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Not the way I play it. Really? <laughs> Could it also be played on a court of some kind? On a court? Court. No. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Hayes. Well, uh, I'm a hacker myself, and I have to leap at this opportunity to ask you outright, is it golf? No. Three no. down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. <laughs> well, if Can you're it... in the rough, you're not on the green. <laughs> <laughs> Can it be played indoors as well as outdoors? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. It's, it's uh, solely an outdoor game, Miss Ronald. I would say this, it is not untoward to consider that in its very basic elements, this could be carried on indoors, but it normally is done outdoors. Then give me back Ms. my nose. <laughs> Miss Ronley, is this a game that is uh, more usually associated with the male sex than the female sex? You mean yes, uh, I believe so. Would it be baseball by any chance? Oh, no. Bennett, no. no. That's five down and five to go, Miss Francis. 
Are balls used in the game? No. That makes it six down and four to go, Mr. Hayes. Are pucks used in the game? <laughs> Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. I think I'm in desperate need of a conference. I've run out of games. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Uh, are there other people playing when you play? Yes. Is this something other than a track meet type of sport? Is it something other than a track meet type of sport? No, I would say this was a track meet type of sport. Well, then why isn't it indoors? Everything that's done out of doors is done indoors. <laughs> well, as I said, Dorothy, this particular facet of the track meet type of sport could, in its very grave fundamentals, be considered to be partially... Well, John, why can't we stick to the grave fundamentals? Well, because when, when it's all revealed, you'll see that this is so much identified with the big outdoors that we have to leave it out there. That's the eight down and two to go, Mr. Uh, Sir. Miss Ronley, do, do, do you throw or hurl anything? <laughs> <laughs> Nine down and one to go, Miss Francis. Are Come you on, on anything yes. during this? Oh, Does yes. it have any wheels? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Stand down and no more it's to go. It's a horse, of course. It's a horse. <laughs> the only thing that hasn't got wheels that I can think of is a horse. Uh, <laughs> Miss Ronley exercises racehorses at Pimlico Racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the horses hurl her. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, yes, Miss Dorothy. John, all punning aside, do you think track meet is fair? Well, I actually, Dorothy, I was in a quandary. I bet you were. Because <laughs> it happens on a track, and they call them race meets, meet, and yes. therefore it is a track meet. There's not much I can do about it now, is there? No, John. But it was unfair, I'll admit it. There we are. <laughs> Miss Ronley, we gave him a rough time. Mr. Daly, I have a written invitation here for you for the Preakness on May the 19th. Oh, well, thank you Pembroke very much. At I was afraid you were going to give me a written invitation to come down and exercise a horse. <laughs> wow. Can't he invite the family? <laughs> so we we bring, sure the family, bring the sure family can. down. Well, thank you. I hope very much I can get away to the peak. It's been wonderful having you here. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from Helene Curtis. New sunshine. Shampoo plus egg but sunny sparkle in your hair. Use shampoo plus egg. Helene Curtis, shampoo plus egg. Yes, nothing shampoos a sunny sparkle into your hair like shampoo plus egg. The sunshine yellow shampoo that conditions your hair. Only shampoo plus egg can leave your hair so soft, silky, yet so manageable. Can give it such life, luster, and sunny sparkle. Your hair responds to shampoo plus egg. So easy and pleasant to use, it's just like washing your hair with sunshine. So put sunny sparkle in your hair. New sunshine, yellow, shampoo plus egg, put sunny sparkle. In your hair, use shampoo plus egg. Helling, Curtis, shampoo plus egg. Of all the shampoos you could buy, this is the only one with a special conditioning action that puts sunny sparkle in your hair. Sunshine Yellow Shampoo Plus Egg. It's good for dry, normal, or oily hair. Try Helene Curtis Shampoo Plus Egg. It's wonderful for all the family, costs no more than ordinary shampoos. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity for which my friends on the panel, at least they were my friends a little while ago, are all blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> As you know, in the case of our mystery celebrity, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we begin it all with Arlene Francis. Are you part of the entertainment world? 
Are you part of the entertainment world? Um, sometimes. Mr. Hayes? Well, apparently, you're using a trick voice. Uh, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Would you by any chance be the, uh, the attractive lady that originated the saying, uh, why don't you come up and see me sometime? <laughs> One down, nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, it, is that true or, or just a tricky answer about sometimes being part of the entertainment world? Could we have a clarification on that? I would say... Is that say, just modesty or... No, I would say, Miss Dorothy, that um, you might consider that our guest has such a diversity of talent that we must consider that other elements of her talent should be described as not necessarily in the entertainment world. Then are you sometimes employed... Uh, in a field that is not the entertainment business? Uh, sometimes. Mr. Sir? Gosh, I was sitting here waiting for George Goebel. I'm off the track. <laughs> 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 uh, this thing that you do uh, on the side has no connection whatever with the entertainment business? That is a question that can only get you in trouble. I would suggest you withdraw it and try another one. Well, and it does have some connection with it. Do you uh, do something with your hands? Yes. Miss Francis? Uh, is it that you write with them? Are you also a writer? Um, doubtful. <laughs> now, the answer would be yes. Mr. Hayes? Are you a, a musical entertainer? No. <laughs> Two down to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, have you written a book? Oh, yes. It's dessert. <laughs> She's training. Does this, um, <laughs> I, I'm on a one-track mind tonight. Does this writing that you do, is it by any chance have anything to do with a syndicated column? Yes. Miss Francis? Her writing has to do with a syndicated column. Have you just come back from Monaco? Monaco? What's that? <laughs> then you haven't just come back from there, is that it? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Hayes. The one girl who doesn't. Well, now, it isn't Luella Parsons, is it? <laughs> no, it isn't. No, it isn't. Four down, wait a minute, no. That isn't, is it? Double negative gives you three and five or seven. I'll just hang this up here. Miss Kilgallen. Uh, are you famous for your millinery, among other things? Yes. Mr. Sir? Well, Dorothy's got it. Must be Miss Hedda Hopper. Miss Hedda Hopper is right. <laughs> before on this idiot <laughs> voice, which I hate. And Doris, do you remember? Finally, you said, oh, I would have died if yes. I hadn't guessed you. Oh, dear. Well, well I'm just Hopper, fun. it's been wonderful. Thank you very Thank much you for very being much. with us. We had a lot of fun. Thank you. Just enough time to give you another brief testing. Let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Anne, Marie, Hollier, is that right? Yes. <laughs> Would you tell us where you're from? From Paris, that's wonderful. We have only three minutes, so let's not walk down there. You come over here with me, if you will, and sit down. And you know how we score the program? And keep the count. You give them a no answer, and I flip a card, you see? Let's let the people here and the people at home know exactly what your line is. Approximately two and a half minutes, we'll tell you that Miss Hollier is salaried, and we'll begin with Peter Lind Hayes. Uh, do you, Miss Hollier, do you, uh, Mademoiselle, do you deal in services uh, exactly? Yes. 
Well, being, <laughs> being from Paris, my next guest would naturally, uh, I would assume that you were in some way remotely connected with perfume. Would that be right? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, are your services used by both men and women? Yes. Uh, uh, could Americans use your service as well as Parisians? Mm, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Well, Miss Hallier, may I assume that you do not work for a profit-making organization? That's correct, no. isn't it? Yes, he may assume that you do not work for a profit-making organization. Don't. Do you That's work right. for the French government? Yes. Uh, does the work that you do for the French government keep you in this country a great deal of the time? Yes. Would it have anything connection, whatever, now, with the United you trip Nations? Up, Bennett, there's an area here a great deal of the time. Well, some of the time. Some of the time. All right, just as long as you understand. We don't want to mislead you. Are you connected with either the UN or the French embassy? I wouldn't say so. No, I don't think so, Bennett. Three down and seven to go, Miss French. Are you associated with some important person in Paris, in France, a government official? No. Ooh, four down and six to go, Mr. Hayes. Do you have any connection with a charitable organization such as the Red Cross of Paris, of France? Red, Red that, Cross? Yes, no, no, that's not germane. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. You do work for some branch of the French government, though. Yes. Is that correct? The national government, not a local government. Yes. Yes. Uh, is it something to do with the cabinet? No. Not exactly. No, and I think we actually run out of time, bureau. Bennett. Hmm? Sorry. Tourist bureau? No. no. Would the you Eiffel say Tower. the what, Bennett? Tourist. No, it no. isn't. I would like you all to meet Second Lieutenant Anna Marie Hollier of the French Air Force. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. Well, actually, Lieutenant Collier uh, is in this country learning American methods. She's going to be working in recruiting, recruitment and training, and she's a guest of the 3500th Air Force Recruiting Wing, United States. And now, before our panel says good night, may I remind you to tune in again next Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, when once again we invite you to play What's My Line. For other localities, please check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. And now, a word from next week's sponsor. Remington. 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 Remington now guarantees. Pay attention, Mac. Cleaner shaves for 15 days. Or your money back. Thank you, brush face. That's right, friends. Remington now guarantees cleaner shaves. So pick up a Remington on the 15-day free home trial plan. You have nothing to lose but your whiskers. Peter Lind Hayes, may I say it's been nice having you with us. It's always pleasant to see that cheerful and happy countenance of yours sitting over there on the panel. Hope we see it again soon. Mickey Rooney will be with us next week. And so until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Arlene. Good night, John. Good night, Peter, dear. Good Thank night. you for being here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Peter. Good night, Bennett. Give our love to everybody in Minnesota, Iowa, and Illinois. You travel, you. <laughs> We're getting to be worse than Secretary Dulles. <laughs> Good night, John. Are you going to Minnesota and Iowa? This week. This yes. week? And Illinois. One night each. And Illinois. There's a man. Can't keep it Made of iron. Storm. Well, have a good trip, Bennett. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line? <laughs> on What's My Line are made through American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Cartman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Be sure to see the other Helene Curtis television programs, Caesar's Hour and Dollar a Second.